Well, I'm reading in the, uh, in the mainstream media that next week, two major right-wing Christian, I, I would call them neo-fascists, I'm sure they don't call themselves that, groups are having uh, major conferences in Washington, D.C., uh, you know, trying to get their right-wing Christian Take Over America Act together. Uh, it's, it, we have a problem with this. But it's not just a problem in the Christian world, it's also a problem in the Muslim world. And on the line with us is our old friend Ani Zanavel, the founder and president of Muslims for Progressive Values, mpvusa.org is the website, M mpvusa also the Twitter handle, and Ani Zanavel, A-N-I-Z-O-N-N-E-V-E-L-D is her Twitter handle also, uh, uh, with us. Uh, Ani, welcome back to the program. So uh, please speak to uh, this uh, apparently unholy alliance that seems to be forming <laughs> between some of the right-wing Christian groups and some of the right-wing Muslim groups. Yes, all the right-wingers love each other, right? Mm. So um, thanks, Tom, for making room for me and uh, and allowing me to speak about this issue. Uh, yes, there is. there has always been this common denominator amongst the, the religious right, regardless of uh, what the religion is, and it's uh, it, at the crux of it is about intolerance for the other, whoever the other is, and um, unfortunately for us uh, in the progressive uh, spectrum, they have come together in um, in collaborating on various issues, and I've spoken about this on your show before in in how they've used Religious Freedom Restoration Act (RIFRA) uh, to justify discrimination in the name of religion. Now, the Christian right has been prolific at using this, and now the Muslim right has learned from it. So what we're getting is um, the, the education uh, curriculum in Maryland, as an example. You have the uh, inclusive curriculum and the religious right is, uh, is has sued the court, has gone to court in Maryland to have the option of opting out of the curriculum. And they um, they fortunately lost the case, but this is going to be the tip of the iceberg because this is also an issue uh, in Dearborn. It's also an issue in California, and this is going to become an issue at the at the national level um, with the elections coming up. And so the conservative Muslim have now teamed up with the religious right. We've seen this. And um, what I've shared with you this morning is that this document, a strategy that the OIC, the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, teamed up with the Family Watch International, which is a right-wing American organization. And together, they have a strategy on how they are going to defend, quote-unquote, family values. Oh, wow. So. Yeah. Now, now you have a uh, MPV, uh, Muslims for Progressive Values, you have a meeting coming up uh, or conference on September 30th at the end of this month. I, I am assuming this 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 I issue that we just discussed is going to be central to that? Yes, it is. And it's going to be at the Union Theological Seminary on September the 30th. And we're going to bring together a panelist that's made up of Muslims, Hindu, and also Americans United for the Separation of Religion and State, mm. um, because we are all um, trying to advance human rights in an inclusive America. Um, and we're all facing the same adversaries, which is the religious right in our respective religions, whether it be Hindus, Muslims, or Christians. Um, so this is going to be an in-depth conversation, and hopefully we're also going to, it's going to lead to a strategy for us to collaborate more tightly, because it's going to take all of us in our respective corners to work, uh, to work with this issue in a cohesive manner, right? Because the religious right have funded this for many decades, as you well know, Tom, right? They've infiltrated the uh, the board, the school board systems at the community level, and that's how they're changing things while the progressives have been asleep at the wheel. So, um, so we are way behind the curve uh, when it comes to us coming together in, uh, in, in addressing this issue. And opting out of an inclusive curriculum it's, it's not an option if we're going to be a really cohesive nation state. Yeah, and, I'm with you. The, yeah. the, the, the principal issues, it seems, for the religious right, the Christian religious right, 
uh, in terms of their so-called family values are abortion, their opposition to abortion, and their opposition to uh, homosexuality, basically. Correct. Um, what are the principal issues when we speak of family values for the Muslim right? Uh, it's the quote-unquote gay agenda. Uh. <laughs> and and it, it's really remarkable. And um, and and the the number of Muslims who actually voted for Trump the second time around was actually higher, even despite the Muslim ban and all those ugly language that he used against uh, Muslims. So, uh. but when it boils down to it, they you know the the unscientific uh, interviews and results that we have is number one, they are against the quote unquote gay agenda, and number two, they don't agree with the, with the Black Lives Matter. And so there you have it. And uh, this is what we're up against. And yet there there are a lot of Muslims in Africa. Um, um, is the Muslim anti-Black Lives Matter movement being driven by non-black Muslims? I mean, is there a, is there yes, a racial cleavage in that Muslims, world? Yeah, no, that's the non-black Muslims in America. And so the global coalition with uh, the Saudi, with the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, the OIC, and with Family Values, uh, is that um, Fam Family Values International, is that they are looking at um, ad advancing their cause, their agenda, their values at the United Nations through the various legal mechanisms. And I know these mechanisms very well because I use them in advancing progressive values. But obviously, you know, our, our our effort is a drop in the bucket compared to their onslaught because of the amount of funding and money they have. The Organization of Islamic Cooperation is made up of 57 countries, and so they always vote as a bloc at the United Nations with very few uh, abstentions and exceptions of member states. So that's how powerful they are, and then you've got MPV fighting them, right? So it's like a <laughs> David and Goliath situation. It, it really so that's is. one... Yeah, so that's one thing. The second thing is they're looking at funding national efforts. And so when CARE, the Muslim, um, you know, supposedly civic, civil organization, uh, civil rights organization in the United States is defending these these conservative Muslim families and their, uh, their choice to opt out, their intention is to take it all the way to the Supreme Court. And so all these efforts at the national level in the United States is gonna be funded by outside sources. So that's also happening. To, to uh, you know, we know there was a lot of talk back, you know, 20 years ago about Saudi Arabia funding Al Qaeda and, and you know, the, 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 the 19 hijackers here in the United States and all that kind of stuff. Um, to what extent is Saudi Arabia or any of the other countries in the region funding the, the conservative Muslim movement in the United States? Or is it is it largely indigenous? Is it largely homegrown? At the moment, so when pre-9-11, Saudi Arabia funded a lot of the conservative organization, ISNA, CARE. So that's that history. And that's why, and they've been around for decades prior to 9-11. Mm -hmm. And since 9-11, that money stream has been cut off. Homeland Security basically made sure that that didn't happen. So it's going to be very interesting for me to see. And, you know, obviously I don't, uh, I don't have the resource um, to, do, to do this kind of investigation, but I'd like to know how that money is going to come in into the United States. I, I don't think it's going to go to the Muslim organization. I think it's going to go to the Christian organizations who are then going to support the uh, various efforts, regardless of religion, that oh, are in which they share values. And another note that I uh, somebody shared me a video, a two-hour conversation, Mike Flynn, believe it or not, mm. this infamous guy, had a, a two-hour conversation with Muslim religious leaders in Detroit. So... Yeah, and Mike Flynn is running around basically promoting a, 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 a Christian, a Christianized America. Exactly. Um, yeah. And with the help with the Muslims. <laughs> yeah. Oh, amazing. Ani Zonneveld is the founder and president of Muslims for Progressive Values, MPVUSA.org. If you want more information about their conference coming up at the end of the month, um, it's it's all there. Uh, also, you can find her on Twitter at uh, Ani Zonneveld or MPVUSA. Ani, thanks for dropping by. It's always great to see you. Likewise. Thank you, Tom. Thank Bye. you. Yep. Have a great one. We'll be back with more of the news of the day and your calls in just a moment.